In this Grasshopper tutorial, I will show you how uh, we can use the uh, height of a point, which is basically the Y component in this example, and it can also be the Z component in uh, another surface. Uh, we can use this component to produce strips like these, and we scale the lines, which I will uh, explain further, and produce uh, such a result, which you can see here. These are the surfaces, and we can have them based on the height of the point. Uh, we can change the number of the strips and we can also define how many, uh, how much the scale is changing based on the height. It can be from a big number to small uh, or from a small to big. And uh, then I'm going to explain uh, in the Grasshopper course. So you can just check out the Grasshopper course and. Uh, we have two examples uh, that that will be an advanced grasshopper tutorial first i'm going to show you how you can use this method to uh, produce these uh, surfaces based on the height so we'll just go further and then i will also explain uh, about the point attractor so we will easily define a point attractor and again at the end we will also talk about the image attractor so it's, it can be an exercise but for the uh, uh, grasshopper tutorial we are just talking about the basics and how we can use this uh, to the uh, to produce the strips based on height okay to start uh, from scratch I'm going to first uh, define a surface here in Rhino uh, again uh, like all the times I'm going to draw a rectangular surface rebuild this and use the soft edit surface uh, to make a deformation you can change the view distance okay we can move this up okay and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and we can scale this up Okay, and I move this to the zero, and now we have the surface. And what I'm going to do is to define the uh, strips based on the height. So first of all, uh, what we need is to import this surface into Grasshopper. So I'm going to do this. Let's import this. And next, we need to make this into strips. So uh, we can use the ISO trim tool okay the ISO trim tool we can connect the surface to the surface and uh, we need some strips here so uh, when you combine ISO trim with divide domain 2 here you can easily give the surface to this domain and the segments to the domain 2 and what really happens is that you are dividing the domain and whatever it is, it's from 0 to 146, 0 to 160, and you're dividing this into the UV count. So I'm going to give this a 1 for the U count, and let's just give this a 30 maybe for the V count. And you can see how easily you can divide this into strips. You can also change the UV count and have uh, vertical strips here. Okay, so let's just get back to horizontal strips and now what I'm going to do is to divide this uh, let's assume that this is a strip I'm going to extract this edge and this edge okay and then I'm going to divide this edge divide this into maybe 50 points and divide this into 50 points and then we can just connect these line these points to the together to have a line and what we are actually doing is we are reconstructing the strip into uh, sections, sections of lines. And now we can play with these lines. Uh, just assume that we can scale these lines at the center and maybe we can just scale them more or less. Okay. So when, just, uh, we, when we connect these lines together, we will have that strip-like surface. So the process is really easy. We just have to make this in Grasshopper. So uh, first of all, let's um, extract the edges. 
So we can use the deconstruct tool, deconstruct brep, and we need the edges here. So we need an list item tool, and we just extract these edges with the four edges out. And now what we can do is to have this edge. You can see that it's the lower one and have another edge. So this is basically the zero and this will be one, this will be two, and this will be three. So what we can do is to have the zero and the two here and work with these. We can just simply divide this into a curve okay divide this curves into 50 or more points and we can just have these more points okay so when we just divide these into points we now want to connect uh, uh, connect these points together with a line so i'm going to go to the curve tool and use the line so we can easily have a line between these two points and you can see that these lines will be lines will be just connected like uh a wrong way and that is because when we have a surface and assume that I just use duplicate border extract the border and let's explode this and use the analyze direction tool you can see that uh, the edges are in different directions so when you divide this this will divide from here and this will divide from here and when you just connect the line, the first will go to the first, the second will go to the second, and the third will go to the third. So the problem is that uh, the edges are in the wrong direction. So we can easily go here and just pick one, one of these curves, and just use the flip tool, the flip curve tool, and flip the direction. So I'm going to flip curve and give this curve to this curve and here we go so you can see that those lines are just made into the strips and that's okay you can see that we have 26 strips and each strips has 43 lines and now we just need to scale these lines so I'm going to scale these lines and the center of scale will be the center of the line we can use the curve point on curve tool and let's connect this to the center and turn this off you can see that default is uh, 0 0.5 so if I give a simple number here and make a loft from these sections you can see that I can easily let's turn everything off uh, you can make strips from all of that easily okay but we're going to work with this 0 0.5 because we want different scales for different lines and how we can do this is let's just show the strips and show the lines okay uh, I'm going to uh, have this center and let's go to the vector and use the deconstruct Point. Deconstruct point will give you the points X, Y, and Z. So basically we now have uh, the X, uh, the Y, and the Z of the points. And what is important for us is the uh, Y component. So you can see that uh, this has a more Y, and this has a less Y, and this has maybe a zero. So what is important for us is a Y component. So uh, we're going to remap this. I've explained about remap, but uh, a remap tool is easily a uh, scaling component for numbers. So you can also download this remap in the video tutorial. I'm just going to put the link uh, in the description box. And you can just uh, download this and pull it into the uh, Grasshopper canvas. So what we're going to do is to scale the Y component and use the Y component as the weight of these lines so each line will have different weights okay what is important here is to always flatten the input of the remap and that is because I've explained that before and that is because when we have 43 uh, lines here each of these are going to be remapped 
or scaled into what we want. So let's assume we want to scale this between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8. And let's give this to the scale. I want to show you what's going to be wrong. Let's give this to the scale factor and turn everything off. And maybe this one and turn on the loft surface. Okay, so you can see that it's going to work somehow, but all the strips are uh, a little bit similar to each other, and they, that's not working. Okay, the wrong the the problem is is here. Okay, when we just remap the Y component, it's going to remap each strip. So each strip is going to be from 0.2 to 0 0.8 but we want to compare all the lines okay so uh, note that all of these lines have to be compared to each other so when we use the remap we're going to flatten this okay I'm going to disconnect this because we will go have a problem here okay let's flatten this so we have all the Y components here and then we can define that uh, the minimum of the Y will have 0 0.2 and the maximum of the Y will have 0 0.8 uh, you can also uh, consider this, that this is minus y, and that is because we are in the minus direction of the y, uh, the base y of the xy direction. If you want the uh, plus y, you can just use, uh, go to the math and use uh, operators, and let's just use an absolute. You can also use an absolute simply. If you're sure that your surface, okay, we can just move this surface uh, here, and we know it's always minus y. So you can also use a absolute here if you want it to be just a plus, okay. And now it's just uh, broken down to one thousand one hundred and eighty data. But remember, we when we flattened this data, we had groups of forty three. Okay, so I'm going to explain more about groups, but as you see these tutorials, you will understand step by step and you will just, uh, uh, I don't know, you just uh, figure it out because the groups and the data is just a more complicated, uh, complicated, complicated thing and you can't just uh, be an uh, expert in data trees because when you have experience you will just understand this but for now what will happen is that we have 40 okay let's just simplify everything uh, we have 25 groups of 43 25 groups of 43 and now because we flattened we uh, destroyed the, the tree data we don't have any groups and they are they are all in one groups okay so what we can do here is simply use a tool called partition list and here it is we just make these data into groups we partition this data into we need a 50 a 43 uh, groups here okay so i'm going to use this 40 through 42 okay sorry 42 and, and add a 1 to the size x plus 1 so we will always have 43 uh, groups so you can see that partition list would just simply uh, correct the flatten because when you just flatten the groups we had groups here okay groups of data let me show you here so we had groups of data each of these strips had a line in it and when we use the flatten we just broke everything into one group okay so everything is going to be in one group when we flatten it and now again we use the partition list to turn it back into 43 groups so we now have the right to give this to the factor and you can see that that's the correct one you can just change the number from 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 uh, you can simply use the graph mapper tool I've explained that in the graph mapper tutorial, but for now you can just simply remap this. The technique was to remap this to 0 and 1, and then use the graph mapper. Okay, we had this two step remap to 0, 1, and graph mapper to make it nonlinear, and then we can just send it to 0 0.2 and 0 0.8. So we can just simply use a busier distribution and control the openings 
yes and you can see that the uh, height will just define the opening and the scale and now we can simply increase uh, the strips but there's a really important uh, tip here so let me just bake this and finish it now so you can see we could just produce the strips and we're good to go but for the tip is that if we change the UV count okay to 28 and 1 you can see that's wrong and that is because when we just switch into 20 uh, uh, eight strips in the uh, vertical lines we just change the edges assume that let me show you here assume that we have this so we had a zero a one that's the number of the edges that's a two and that's a three before we used the zero and two so this was the edges and this was uh, the line we made and now we just change the strips so it's going to be one and three so now you just use the one and three so remember when you change the way of the strippers you have to change this and check this out that the lines are correct that's okay and now we just can see the results and here it is you can see how great that works and we can easily just again deform this surface maybe Let's change the direction to 50 and 150 in the vertical line and maybe just, okay. And now you can see that that's going to change and that is because we have different heights on the surface. So this is how you can do this and you can simply uh, define this uh, with a graph mapper. We can use the sign graph mapper and just make it a sine wave you can see this okay so this is how you can use the height uh, of the surface and this is how you can make the strips so the grasshopper tutorial was basically about using techniques to make the strips scale so you can just combine this with point attractor and curve attractor and image attractor or whatever you want and you can see that this is going to be okay and that's the results okay thank you for watching and if you want to know more about the strips technique I'm going to continue my tutorial onto the uh, advanced tutorials about how we can use the height to produce a zigzag surface like this and use the uh, image attractor and use the point attractor so I'm going to uh, basically uh, let's do, let me show you the point attractors and you can see that we can define this technique with points and this will be just advanced for those who want to have more exercise want more grasshopper tutorials or advanced tutorials but for now uh, everything is good to go and we have the strips and you understand how you made it and how you can make it and feel free to comment underneath this video